Okay, this is going to be the chapter eight review with me going over it. So let's go for it. Graduates of a certain college have a mean income of $56,000 per year with a standard deviation of $10,000 per year. Suppose a random sample of 100 graduates from this college are randomly selected. Describe the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Well, what we can see right here is that N is 100. Your mean is 56,000 and your standard deviation is 10. So since n is equal to 100, which is greater than or equal to 30, by the central limit theorem, we can assume the distribution of x bar is normally distributed. And remember, if it's less than 30, if n is less than 30, it must say population is normally distributed. So for small sample sizes, we do need that extra little statement. OK, so that would be part A. Part B says, what is the probability it's greater than $58,000? So for that one, what we'll do is let's add to my picture here a little bit, I'll give myself a little bit more space. The 56,000 is the center point. So 58,000 will be somewhere over to the right. And we want the area that I just shaded. And let me just double check. Yeah, the mean is 56,000. So the probability that X is X bar is greater than 58,000 is equal to, we would do normal CDF, 58,000 comma infinity comma your 56,000 comma 10,000. And we have a sample of 100. So we'll divide by the square root of 100, OK? And so let's go to our calculator and second VARS. We're going to go down to normal CDF. And again, we're going to do the same thing we did in chapter seven. But we do have to accommodate now for the sample size. So we're still going to use the infinity for our upper bound. And then our standard deviation will be the 10,000. Oh. will be the 10,000 divided by the square root of 100. And you can actually type in the calculation if you want. And we get 0 0.02275. So roughly 0 0.0228 would be our answer for that one. Let's just double check that I got my numbers there. Yeah. OK. And then state your result in a sentence. So again, I'm going to cheat a little bit or use my time efficiently and say, I'm going to literally copy and paste. And then down here, we'll just, instead of saying what is, we'll say the probability of the mean income being greater than the 58,000 is 0 0.0228. OK. Or you could say 2.28%. Either way is fine with me. If it's the online homework, just report it in whatever fashion they asked you to report it in, just to make your life easier. Okay, so that would be part A, part B actually. Part C for this one, they want to know what is the probability be between 54,000 and 58,000? Well, the 56,000 is in the middle. So 58 will be on the right, the 54 will be on the left. So we want the probability that X bar is between those two. So that would be our normal CDF, 54,000 comma 58,000. That would be our upper and lower bound. And then we do the 56,000 and then the 10,000 divided by the square root of 100. 
And if you wanted to, you could actually calculate just so you can do this. Um, you could do the 10,000 divided by the square root of 100. And again, you can do that however you want, but it is 1,000, which makes sense because you know, it's basically 10,000 divided by 10. So we're going to lop off a zero. So if we go to our second vars, we don't need infinity on this one because we are have an upper and a lower bound that doesn't extend on the x-axis. And I can leave in the mean of standard deviation I had from the last part because they're the same. And I get 0.95449. So roughly 0.9545, if we round to four places, like it says. And then for the sentence, we're gonna do the same thing we did a few minutes ago. I'm literally copying and pasting, but instead of a question, I'm gonna make it a statement. And so I'm gonna cut off the what is part and start with just the, so we'll say the probability that the mean income of the chosen sample is between $54,000 and $58,000 is 0.9545, or you could say 95.45%. I'm not super picky with the rounding as long as you round correctly. If you don't round to the exact same number of places, um, not such a big deal for me, but it is a big deal if it's multiple choice or it's um, being graded by the computer. Okay, so that was an 8.1 question. So now we're off to the 8.2 question. So you'll notice the 8.1 question was about the mean. And if we scroll down here, we'll see the 8.2 question will be about the proportions. So you can see that it says a magazine article reports that 60% of American adults admit to experiencing sleep problems at least once a week. So that 60% right here is our P. So suppose the sample of adults to be chosen is from this population. What is the minimum sample size required to assume that the sampling distribution of the P at is approximately normal? So for that one, you need N times P, one minus P to be greater than or equal to 10. So basically we have to solve for N here. So we're gonna have N times uh, 0 0.6, one minus 0 0.60. That has to be greater than or equal to 10. So let's pull out our calculator. So if we do 0 0.6 times 1 minus 0 0.6, we get 0.36. So we're going to have 0.36 times n has to be greater than or equal to 10. So we're just going to divide both sides by 0.36. And from there, we're going to get n has to be greater than or equal to whatever 10 divided by 0.36 is. So if we do 10 divided by 0.36, I get 27.777. Let me just double check that. Oh, I knew that didn't seem right. Notice up here, I did make a mistake. So it should be 0 0.6 times 1, 1 minus 0.6. So it should actually be 0.24. So I did make a mistake there. Let's fix that. So this will be 0.24. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 0.24. And we're going to get a slightly different answer. So that is my mistake. But as you can see, it happens, even to the best of us. And we get 41.666. So I would say N has to be roughly 42. Okay, so that would be the minimum sample size. So anything we picked that would be bigger than that would be fine. <clears throat> okay, so that would be my part A. And let's look at part B. I'm gonna just push this down to the next page so we have a little bit more room. Okay, suppose we repeatedly choose samples of size 50 
So that'll be our n, which is big enough. Describe the sampling distribution of p hat, include the values of mu of p and sigma of p. So we would know that 50 times 0.6, 1 minus 0.6, we can just quick do that calculation, 50 times 0.6, parenthesis, 1 minus 0.6, and we get 12. This is greater than or equal to 10, so that's check. And then we would just say 50 is less than or equal to 0.05 of all American adults, and we'll say that that is also true. So then we know our mu of p hat is equal to p, which is 0.6. And our sigma of p hat is the square root of 0.6, 1 minus 0.6 over 50, which is approximately, let's calculate it, second square root 0.6, parenthesis, 1 minus 0.6, parenthesis, divide that by 50. And we get 0 0.0628, 0 0.06928. So that should be enough places. So that's our mean and standard deviation, and it's approximately normal. Or actually, I should probably say just be clear the distribution of p hat is approximately normal. And we know that because of the conditions we satisfied right here, OK? And then we can actually use, just to make life easier, we can use these two values we just calculated when we go to normal CDF. So I'll highlight them so you can see them. So if we choose 50, uh, sample 50, what is the probability between 40 and 60% of the sample have sleep problems at least once a week? So we already know the mean is 0.6. So that means that would be right here and 0.4 would be over here. So we want the area between those two. So 0.4 is less than equal to p hat is less than equal to 0.6. So that would be normal CDF 0.4 comma 0.6 comma 0.6 because that's the mean comma 0.06928. So you can see I got those values from the previous part. And we would do second vars come down to normal CDF, and we would just type in our numbers. And you can see I have my numbers in, and my final answer is 0 0.49805. OK, so I would probably say roughly 0.4981. And that would be that. And let's just double check. I probably have to write a sentence and read my directions. Uh, write your values in a sentence. So again, what I would do um, is literally cut and paste. So I'm going to go over here. And where it says, what is, I'm going to say literally that part of it, copy. I go down here, go a little farther down. And tell I'm still getting used to using the program. Um, and then we'll just say the probability, make that a capital, between 40% and 60% of the sample have a sleep problems at least once a week is 0.4. 981. And again, you can report it as a percent if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as a proportion. Okay. And that would be part C, I guess it was. Yep. Okay. I'm going to move this to the next page just so I have a little bit more room. That would be C. So then D is, again, 50 Americans. We want to know more than 65% or the probability that more than 65% have sleep problems. So 0.60 is still in the center. We haven't changed that. 0.65 would be somewhere to the right. And we want the shaded area. So the probability that p hat is greater than 0.65 would be normal CDF, 0.65 comma infinity comma 0.6 comma. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to scroll backwards to make sure we have the right number. It'd be 0.06928 is our standard error. 
So 0 0.06928. We probably don't need that many decimal places, but I'm just going to go with it. So second VARs down to normal CDF. And my lower bound would be 0 0.65. My upper bound, you can put in infinity, but to be honest with you, you can actually use the number one because uh, probabilities can't be bigger than one. But to not be too confusing with what you did for the previous section, we'll just put in the much larger number that we don't need. So it's 0.2352. So really we could use one. We don't actually have to use an infinity there. And then again, it wanted the sentence. So you can see again, I'm literally gonna cut and paste. And instead of seeing what is, we're just gonna start with the. So the probability that more than 65% of, um, of them have sleep problems at least once a week is um, 0.2352. Okay, and that would be D. And then I think we just have one more part, E. What is the probability, or if we choose a sample of 50 Americans, what is the probability that between 15 and 24 of those have sleep problems? So for this one, we need P hat. So for the first one, we just have to recognize, and remember we did this in class and your book did it as well. P hat here would be 15 over 50. And then for this one, it would be 24 over 50. So we have two P hats. We just have to see what they would be. So let's pull out our handy dandy calculator. 15 divided by 50 would be 0.3 and then 24 divided by 50 would be 0.48. So we have a 0.3 and a 0.48. So again, 0 0.6 is in the middle. So 0.3 is gonna be somewhere over here, 0.48 will be somewhere there. So we don't even have to consider the infinity, which technically doesn't make logical sense to use an infinity for any of these, but we've been doing it and it works fine. So the probability between 0.3 less than or equal to p hat less than or equal to 0.48, would be normal CDF 0.3 comma 0.48 comma 0.6 comma the 0 0.06928. So we'll go here. And so second VARs, let's go down to here and we'll do 0 0.3, 0 0.48, 0 0.48. And then the rest can stay the same. And we get 0 0.0416. So that's actually an unusual probability because it's low. And again, that wanted a sentence. So we'll literally copy and paste. It is kind of nice that we can do that. And I'm gonna go down here. trying to get it down to the bottom down right here. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, there we go. So we would say the probability that between 15 and 24 of those chosen have sleep problems at least once a week would be is 0.0. 416. And I'm just going to add a little note here just because we didn't ask it here, but since this probability is less than 0 0.05 or 5%, this event would be unusual. Now, it didn't actually ask me to acknowledge that, but since we haven't had one that asked that question, might, might as well put it in there. It's not a bad idea to acknowledge that. And then one other thing um, I just wanna point out is for this type of question, you actually don't need to use an infinity ever if you don't want to, because probabilities only range between zero and one anyway. So your lower bound could always be zero and your upper bound could always be one. But at the same time, if it's less confusing to you to just use negative and positive infinity, that actually works. So go for it, okay? And that is the end of this recording. 
So hopefully that helped.